Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's Grade 6 Practice Problems Review on Unit 4, Lesson 10, Dividing by Unit and Non-Unit Fractions. In question number 1, Priya is sharing 24 apples equally with some friends. She uses division to determine how many people can have a share if each person gets a particular number of apples. For example, 24 divided by 4 equals 6 means that if each person gets 4 apples, 6 people can have apples. Here are some other calculations. You have the 24 divided by 2 equaling 12, which Think about that. That means 24 apples divided by 2 apples per person means 12 people can have apples. 24 apples divided by 1 apple per person means 24 people can have apples. And then we have 24 apples divided by half of an apple per person equals question. Now Priya thinks that the question mark represents a number less than 24. Do you agree, explain, or show your reasoning? Well, I strongly disagree with her reasoning here. Basically, as the amount for each person gets smaller, more people can have apples. If you look and you go, well, if each person has four apples, six people can have apples. If each person can have two apples, 12 people can have apples. If each person can have one apple, 24 people can have apples. As the amount per person was getting smaller, more people were able to partake in the apple eating. And so in the case of 24 divided by 1 half, how many people can have apples? Well, if we start off with a fraction bar here or a tape diagram, we can split this into 24 apples. And there we have our 24 apples. Now, each person would be getting half of an apple. So cut these in half. And if we were to count all these up, we would end up with 48 people. And if you think about that logically, 24 apples broken into half apples will be 48 half apples. So each person of the 48 gets half an apple. Looking over this question number two, I love this question because here's a centimeter ruler. Use the ruler to find one divided by one tenth. Let's zoom in and way in here and to look at this one divided by one tenth. Well, how many tenths do I have here to get to one? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then finally I get to 10. So when we're looking at one divided by one tenth, there are, well, 10 pieces there. So one divided by one tenth is going to be 10. Now what if we zoom back in on this ruler here and figure out what four divided by our one-tenth pieces is going to be. Well, we already counted our first set, right? And so now we can just keep going. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So our four divided by one tenth is going to be 40. So our four broken into pieces of one-tenth is going to be 40. So again, 4 divided by one-tenth is simply 40. Now, what did our calculation do each time? Well, 1 divided by one-tenth was 10. 4 divided by one-tenth was 40. It seems as if we simply each time the dividend was multiplied by 10. And of course, the dividend is the first number here. So it was 1 times 10 and then 4 times 10. The dividend was multiplied by 10. 
now can we extend that to our next question? Use your work from the previous part to find each quotient. 18 divided by 1 tenth. Now this could simply be 18 times 10. And that would get us a solution of 180. And now as we look at 4 divided by 2 tenths, we are going to have 4 times that denominator now of 10, and that's going to be 40. But something special happens now because we have a numerator of 2. We need to take that 40 and then divide by 2, and we get 20. And if you ask Mr. Richards, why didn't we divide in the first example? Well, I guess in a way we kind of did, right? Because this is 100. 80, and then we take the 180, and what are we dividing by? I'll give you one moment to think about it. It's the 1. So we did divide technically by the numerator there. It's just a 1, and so we didn't write it down at first. Now, what about 4 divided by 8 tenths? Let's follow the same process here. Let's take our 4 and multiply by the 10, and we once again get 40. And then we're going to take our 40 and divide by the 8, and this time we get 5. So we have our solutions here of 180, 20, and 5. Now let's keep this math party going here. 5 divided by 1 tenth. Let's multiply by the denominator first. So we're going to take 5 and multiply by 1 tenth. So, I'm sorry, by 10. Hello. 5 times 10 is 50. And then we're going to take that 50 and divide it by our numerator, which is 1. And, well, we just get 50 again. What about our next question? Well, let's take our 5 and multiply by that denominator again. So 5 times 10 is 50. And now the difference here is we need to take that 50 and divide by the numerator of 3. And that's 50 thirds, which is a little awkward. Um, if you want to convert that into a mixed number, you take the numerator 50 and see how many times you can get 3 in there. And 1 times 3 is 3. Subtract 5 minus 3 is 2. Bring down the 0, 20. You end up with then 6 more times, and you get 18 with a remainder, a leftover of 2. And so this ends up being 16 and 2 thirds. What about C? 5 divided by 9 tenths. Let's once again take our 5 and multiply by the 10. And so 5 times 10, once again, is 50. And then we have 50 divided by 9, which is going to be, this time, 50 ninths. And you're okay to stop there, just like you would have been okay to stop with 50 thirds. But if you wanted to turn this into a mixed number, 50 divided by 9, well, 9 goes into 50 five times. Subtract the 45, you're left with a remainder, a leftover there of 5. And so this is also equivalent to 5 and 5 ninths. And so here we have our solutions of 50, 16 and 2 thirds, which is the same thing as 50 thirds, and lastly, 50 ninths, which is the same thing as 5 and 5 ninths. In question number 4, we're going to use the fact that 2 and a half divided by 1 eighth equals 20 to find what 2 and a half divided by 5 eighths is. Explain or show your reasoning. Well, if we took 2 and a half and divided by 1 eighth to get 20, we're dividing that instead by 5 eighths. So we're splitting that into not just 1 eighth, but 5 eighths. Now, there's 20 groups of 1 eighth in the 2 and a half. Now, the size of each group is going to be quintupled, and so the number of groups will decrease by a factor of 5, which basically means you're dividing by 5 to get 4. 
So 2 and a half divided by 5 eighths is actually 4. Question 5. It takes one week for a crew of workers to pave three-fifths kilometer of a road. At that rate, how long will it take to pave one kilometer? Now write a multiplication and division equation that represent the question and then answer the question and show your reasoning. Well, if we start off with our diagram first, I think it's a good way to go. We're looking for here a total of one kilometer. Now it's broken into fifths. One, two, three, four, and then five for the fifths. We know it's taken them so far one week to do the three-fifths. And so if it's taken one week to do three-fifths, how much of a week did that take? Well, one week to do these three-fifths means that it took a third of a week to do each of these fifths. And if it took a third of a week to do each of these fifths, then these last two boxes will also be a third of a week. How does this come together? Well, you have five of these one-thirds, so that must mean it's five-thirds of a week, which is the same thing as one and two-thirds weeks. For our division and multiplication questions, what did we do? Well, we took one and divided it by three-fifths, and that equals, not quite sure, but it equals one and two-thirds. And then our multiplication equation would be three-fifths times our question mark is going to equal one. Question number six. A box contains one and three-fourths pounds of pancake mix. Our friend Jada uses seven-eighths pounds for a recipe. What fraction of the pancake mix in the box did she use? Explain or show your reasoning, and once again, draw a diagram if needed. If we have a box that contains one and three-fourths pounds, well, we can break that into, that's the same thing as seven-fourths. Let's break that into seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now she used seven-eighths of a pound, and right now we're divided into fourths. So if we divide this one more time, we'll now be into eighths of a pound. And if we were to count seven-eighths, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How much have we used here? Well, once again, that was seven. What do we have left on this other side? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 14 total. She used seven out of the 14, which is one half. And there are multiple ways of getting there, and that's just one of them. And our last question for this lesson, calculate each percentage mentally, 25% of 400. Well, 25% is one-fourth. It's dividing by four, so you'll get 100 here. Half, I mean 50% of 90, well, same thing, right? Half and 50%. Half of 90 is 45. 75% of 200, a little trickier. Um, it's three-fourths. Now you could just divide by four. 200 divided by four is 50, and then multiply that by three in your heads, in theory, is 150. 10% 10 of 8,000 is 800. When you're doing 10% of something, you um, are basically just dividing by 10, which results in uh, 800 there. 5% of 20, well, I know that 10% is equal to 2. 5% is going to be half of 10%, so it's simply going to be 1. So our answers here, you have the 100, the 45, 150, 800, and 1. 
And that's it for these grade six practice problems review on unit four, lesson 10, dividing by a unit and non-unit fractions. Good luck.